an AMI digital exclusive. Hi, I'm Thomas Logan, and I own Equal Entry. We're a company that works to contribute to a more accessible world by helping technology companies make their products work for people with disabilities. I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I've been talking about accessibility for virtual reality. So the A11TO conference is important for the accessibility community because it brings people together that wouldn't normally get to talk and learn from each other, all the different ways to think about accessibility. So I believe accessible experiences have been made, but they're all one-off experiences, usually from university or academic thought processes, and we need to make this more widely available. So I'd love to see it go to, here's the way that you make a VR experience accessible, here's a application programming interface, something that a developer can follow, implement, and then be accessible. Specifically for people who are blind and partially sighted, I'm really interested in virtual objects having text alternatives because I think when we think about the real world, we're trying to figure out how do we get a camera to recognize that you know something's a glasses or a table. But in the virtual world, we already have those labels for the objects. And so that was a big part of my talk today is I think if we start from every virtual object has a text label and potentially a description, that's going to be a great starting point for making it more accessible. With VR accessibility, it's sort of a, a self-directed goal for my company. Uh, when I left Microsoft, I was going to get a PhD in virtual reality. That was my goal. I, I really am excited by the technology and as someone who has worked in the space, I'm more interested in the sound and audio environments of how can we use information distributed via sound to make those environments more accessible. And I've spent too long waiting for technologies to become accessible. So I'm a big advocate and evangelist for getting the VR companies to start working on accessibility now. Um, one virtual reality experience that I really liked was um, basically an update of the diary of Anne Frank. In Amsterdam, the Anne Frank Museum made their whole environment uh, a virtual world that you could walk around and explore. It was accessible. I actually think people who are blind or partially sighted would really enjoy the narration. There's very high quality sort of audio described things happening but it's not fully interactive. So for example, I would like in that experience that you would be able to know where to point to and potentially point anywhere inside of the house and get a description of what you're looking at as well as the additional narration. So that would be one example. Another would be doing a social world, like so they call them a metaverse, but say you wanted to meet up with your friend that doesn't live in Toronto, but lives you know, somewhere else in the world, you should be able to come together visit each other's virtual homes and you should get a description of like what have they displayed in their virtual home. And I think all of that's really close to being possible. Uh, and that, again, that was my presentation today. Like let's just add those attributes in. So the same way you navigate a website and can figure out what are the graphics or images on this page, that's how it should work in a virtual world. Like what are the photos or what are the paintings they have hanging in their house or in their virtual house? You should get a description of those. So I think for um, people with vision loss, I don't think it's that far though that like actually the way that virtual reality, most of the programming environments work, you use a pointer almost like a virtual cane to point at objects. Uh, like that's how everyone interacts in the virtual world. So it's really just making sure that when you point at a virtual object, it can read information back to you. For people with hearing loss, uh, adding captions into the experience Right now, it's very difficult to bring closed captioning into the videos. You actually have to do what's called open captions in virtual reality, so you have to burn the captions into your video. And I don't like that because, you know, I might be a person with hearing loss and vision loss, for example, and I might need to have the captions displayed at a larger font size than maybe what the author chose to burn them in on. So I think that one is, again, a place for the community to advocate for and request the virtual reality platforms to support customizable captions. And finally, for mobility um, issues, I think this is probably the one that's the most interesting. You see a big difference for people with mobility impairments in virtual reality from like say the web or mobile devices because in the virtual reality environment you're thinking about reaching things. And so the same way that, for example, the Americans with Disabilities Act says there's a certain reach requirement to control something, you have to think about that in virtual reality the same way. And everything being able to be accessed from a seated position is part of a new sort of accessibility requirement for 
people working in technology because they didn't need to think about that on mobile and websites, but they are going to need to think about it in virtual reality. So I see VR going very accessible because I have to believe in a more accessible world and I do think people want to do the right things. Um, I'm most excited about the web side of virtual reality, so something called web VR. Um, but because the web is an open standard, um, the same way that a website is usually more accessible than a desktop application, I think the web version of virtual reality is going to be more accessible than some of the proprietary versions. So I'm excited to contribute to that and hopefully help push accessibility forward by showing it's possible on the web one first. Visit AMI.ca for more accessible media.